Well, if you watch my channel, my videos, and you are usually watching my AMD driver videos, you know that in the past few months, AMD did some really amazing things. For example, the DX9 1011 optimizations, uh, something that nobody was expecting them to do. Um, they have RSR, they have FSR 2.0, so they have been doing very good things in terms of software, okay? And with these drivers, they outmatch themselves, again. As I say in all my videos, 22 is the year 2022, 7 is the month, July, and 1 is the revision in that same month, so the first revision of July. But well, before the juicy parts, let's start with the release notes right after the sponsor of today's video. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. We're using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So as for the release notes, we start with some highlights. Highlights for Swordsman Remake, Radeon Boost using variable rate shading with Elden Ring, Resident Evil Village and Valorant, Basically those, those games where you have way darker environments, you're not actually watching any of, of the details on those pixels actually delivering darker images. Since the, the images are dark, you can't actually uh, see the details, okay? And with variable rate shading, they actually decrease the details on those parts only, and that improves the performance overall without any kind of visual de degrading. I mean, at least I can't really notice. So basically that's how it works, I believe. Then we have uh, Microsoft Windows 11 version 22H2, the support, of course. Microsoft Agility SDK release 1.602, including new minor features. Microsoft Agility SDK release 1.606, including Microsoft Shader Model 6.7, okay? I remember the times where I couldn't actually play a game because my GPU only had Shader Model 2 uh, and the game required Shader Model 3. It is not like today that you can actually play the game but with very low FPS. You couldn't even start the game because your GPU did not support that shader model. Good. <laughs> Additional Vulkan extensions, click here for more information. And we have a very, very interesting thing now, very interesting thing, a thing that I made a video about one year ago that AMD was working on, and finally, we actually get the software. AMD Noise Suppression. AMD Noise Suppression reduces background audio noise from your surrounding environment using a real-time deep learning algorithm, providing greater clarity and improved concentration whether you are focused on an important meeting or staying locked in on a competitive game. This is amazing. This is really amazing because after all this time, finally we have a competitor to RTX Voice or whatever it is called now, and we actually need it on the AMD side. This is a thing like the new codec that AMD is supposed to be releasing soon. Like the new codec, this thing is very important for streamers that have usually uh, some background noise. This is a big yes for streamers, okay? This is just a big yes. I mean, streamers and mostly people that record things or in meetings and so on, this is a must because those people that are actually talking with you or that are actually hearing you won't hear the background noise. Tomorrow I will test this feature and I will make a video about it to see how it works and if it works properly or not, okay? Yeah. Now we have the Crown's Dual with OpenGL optimizations. Up to 79% increase in performance in Minecraft 4K fabulous settings, up to 75% increase in performance in Minecraft 4K fabulous settings, using Radeon Software 22.7.1 on Radeon RX 6400 versus the previous software driver 22.6.1. So even on the 6400, we have over, or in this case, up to 75% performance increase, 75 on a card as slow as the RX 6400. It is insane. I have more tests in the end with OpenGL, with other things, so, do not skip this part because it is very important, really, really, I mean, huge performance increase. We had those beta drivers before with the Windows 11 22 half 2 beta drivers and now we have that implemented on these usual drivers from AMD. So that's great, that's really great. 
We also have more things for Radeon Super Resolution, in this case, expanded support for discrete Radeon RX 5000 and 6000 series GPUs on AMD Ryzen processor notebooks with hybrid graphics. Also, RSR has been improved to provide a more seamless experience in borderless full screen mode with a performance slash quality slider to personalize your gaming experience. As for the fixed issues, we have lower than expected folding home compute performance with OpenCL API on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6800, so this is fixed finally. Auto Undervolt may disable zero RPM fan feature, also a nice fix. Hitman 3 may freeze when rapidly switching between windows in full screen exclusive mode, so if you were having these problems with Hitman 3, well, they're fixed, or at least it seems they're fixed, so let me know in the comment section if you had these problems before, before, let me know if they are actually fixed or not. Video upscaling in browsers appears blurry with some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6900 XT graphics, so no more blurred videos, at least with the 6900 XT it seems. Enhanced sync may cause games to lock to 15 FPS with video playback on extended monitors. So if you were having an extended monitor setup, well, if you were having problems with enhanced sync, I still don't know why people use enhanced sync, you just have free sync. Unless you're, you have like 60 hertz free sync, I don't see any reason to use enhanced sync, so... But if you were using actual, if you were actually using the enhanced sync, well, it is fixed. Or if it isn't, let me know in the comment section, as always. Now let's go to the, um, well, known issues, basically the non-fixed issues. The first one is stuttering may be experienced while playing Call of Duty Warzone on the Caldera map with some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6900 XT graphics. Once again, this issue still stands. Radeon Super Resolution may fail to trigger after changing resolution or HDR settings on games such as Nio 2. Virtual reality headsets may flicker with some AMD graphics products such as the RX 6800 XT graphics. GPU utilization may be stuck at 100% in Radeon performance metrics after closing games on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon 570. So this is a bug happening for several months and it is still not fixed, I mean, come on AMD. It's a bug as simple as the GPU utilization being stuck at 100%, just fix it. Come on. And the last one is basically the enhanced sync that by now is... It's an hand sync that by now is a meme, obviously, it's like over one year, almost two years, and we still have the enhanced sync problem with black screens uh, on the known issues, so... But this time we also have important notes. The first one is that AMD software capture and stream features and overlay support for clone mode and Ifinity display configurations will be introduced at a later date. This is really, really important because I, I had some people before with multi-monitor setups actually um, asking me if they could record in different monitors or at least they could select the monitor they, want to rec they wanted to record with the MD relief settings and I don't think you can do that now, but it seems that in the future uh, the, ca the capture and streaming um, the capture and streaming software inside the Adrenaline software will actually allow you to select which display or which monitor you actually want to record or stream. Finally! Finally! And the last important note is Microsoft Shader Model 6.7 relaxed format casting and advanced texture operations are currently limited to Radeon RX Vega and later AMD graphics products. So Shader Model 6.7 you need a Vega card or later. Polaris are out of the line with a 6.7 shader model, okay? That's it. So after this long ass release notes, because they actually had to be longer uh, than usually, because the, the drivers actually took longer than usual to be released as well, so I mean, it's a good thing in most scenarios, apart from the known issues, of course. But we're gonna go now to the juicy part. And the first juicy part are the OpenGL optimizations. Remember, up to 79% performance increase, and I can tell you right away that in some scenarios, it is way more than 79%. So let's test the OpenGL drivers, the new OpenGL drivers versus the 22.5.2 or the 22.6.1 with the RX 6600 XT.
Now you saw this huge performance increase, but with the 6600 XT. But what about the older cards, like for example the RX, a card from the RX 5000 series, in this case the RX 5700 XT? Are the RX 5000 series also affected by these drivers? Are these cards actually getting also a bit of performance like the 6000 series cards? Let's see. And well, it seems like AMD is following the same path that they followed before with the X9, 10 and optimization. With the X9, 10 and 11 optimizations, where they actually just focus those optimizations on the RX 6000 series cards. But at least in terms of OpenGL performance, the OpenGL drivers actually increased a bit the performance with the RX 5700 XT. They did not increase the performance as much as they did with the 6600 XT, that is in a newer generation, but they still increased a bit. Which is better than expected because the, the X9, 10 and 11 optimizations just increased the performance by a bit with the RX 5000 series cards and older cards where the, the bigger performance boosts were actually with the RX 6000 series. But on the OpenGL optimizations, well, it seems that the 5000 series also have something to give. Not as much as the 6000 series, but at least something. And that something is free performance and free performance is always welcomed. And well, you, you must be hearing you must be hearing some helicopters. It seems that there there's a fire near here, so well, at least they're here to put it out. Anyway, in terms of performance, well, in terms of performance, you can see that the new optimizations, the X9, 10, and 11 optimizations, were still not introduced for the older cards, which is a bummer. And since we're talking about bad things, let's talk about some bad things of the OpenGL implementations as well, because both implementations, the X and OpenGL implementations, share the same problems in some scenarios. For example, in games with Unreal Engine 4, that they, they actually cache a lot of shaders, they have a big shader cache and they are constantly doing the shader cache and redoing. Well, for those games in Unreal Engine 4, what happens is that the DX 9, 10 and 11 optimizations bring lots of stutters mostly on Unreal Engine 4 games. If you are going for games like God of War, you still have good performance increase, a good amount of performance increase, and you just have a stutter here and there. But in some games like the Unreal Engine 4 ones, the stutters make it unplayable. Unless you fix them by locking the FPS. If you lock the FPS to a certain level, well, the, the gameplay smoothness will be improved a lot. But at the same time, you actually need to lock the, the frames. If you have a free sync monitor, you are actually used to do it and it will improve a lot your experience, but still AMD needs to fix this, okay? They need to fix this is a problem, it is a problem. And as for OpenGL Minecraft tests, it also applies because we have way, way higher frames way more average frame rates and most of the times way higher 1% lows as well but if you watch the frame timeline you can see that the frame timeline is way worse with many spikes here and there meaning that the gameplay was not as smooth as before so we had way more fps but we also had the bad thing which is the frame pacing and the frame timings that are way worse it's a trade i guess if you want more fps do it. If you just want a smoother experience, well, maybe just use the older drivers. Still, these drivers are 
a must for people using OpenGL applications. If you are actually using some uh, work OpenGL applications, if you are using, let's say, uh, emulators, if you are an em emulator guy that loves to play older games, r retro games, uh, if you like to play like Zelda on your PC and you're using Vulkan or OpenGL, well, then these drivers are a must for you because the performance increase will be insane. And I repeat, insane as you saw in the Minecraft part. And in other scenarios like emulators, you may not have the problems that you have on Minecraft with frame timing and you may actually have a way more enjoyable experience than um, with the previous drivers, with higher frame rates and smoother frame rates as well. Just try it and let me know in the comment section. Now, as for my experience, these were actually the only bad parts of these drivers. These drivers also bring some new things, like I told you before. Basically, the, um, the noise cancellation, the, that noise cancellation feature. We also have a request for installation of the drivers when you're installing the drivers. It will request you to accept the installation of the display drivers. Okay, that's a new thing. And overall, that's it. No black, no black screens, no blue screens. Everything is working stable. Temperatures are within the same, more or less within the same. Performance is within the same apart from the, um, the OpenGL optimizations. And I can't really complain. Finally, we have OpenGL working as it should from the beginning. So guys, that's all for today's video. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. Leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know what's your experience with these drivers because that's why I make these videos for you to share your experiences in the, um, in the comment section and for you to let me know and to let us all know as a community if we have problems here and there and if they actually fix the problems that they say they fixed, okay? That's really important, so do not forget. Leave your comment in the comment section. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.